and his queen was merely a decoy. The bloody note was read by the jock, and now only one thing mattered to them. Revenge, struggles, betrayal, and a fatal blow. What seemed to be the end was the key to the beginning of dark and cruel times in the sacred lands of Kruger. Evil was about to awaken once again. Lions born for a single purpose would face an unexpected and bloody fate. The African jungle would prepare another great tale for humanity, and its protagonists would be kings who would bring forth the first recorded war between coalitions of lions. Today, you will get to know the jock lions and how these beasts became true legends after one of their members became obsessed with lionesses from a rival pride. So, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's free and greatly supports our work here. Click like and let's get into it. In 2009, in Kruger National Park, South Africa, from time to time, park workers elect certain lions to be permanently marked to use their lives for research and to deepen the understanding of the mysteries these felines carry. Lions chosen for this purpose receive tracking chips or monitoring collars as they enter puberty. Typically, those with the best physical conditions and the highest likelihood of living longer are selected for research. Once selected, the lions are sedated and marked with GPS trackers. Afterward, they live normally in the wild, being monitored for research at key moments in their existence. Humans do not interfere with their way of life, allowing nature to take its course. The only interference that occurs is the replacement of tracking equipment if necessary over the years. In 2009, Kruger National Park had just lost the lions that served as the basis of its research. However, in the same year, many litters of cubs were born into the world, making it difficult to monitor so many felines. Among them were five males from the same pride who soon caught the attention of park workers. Two years later, these males formed a coalition with the aim of conquering territory and being named kings. Their muscular build was impressive and set them apart from other coalition named lions, known as the Jock Coalition. The fate of these five males was sealed when they were chosen to be marked with tracking chips on their legs to continue an extensive observation research. And so began the record of the brave Jock. Even in their youth, the Jock lions displayed a thick, dark mane that made them even more attractive to the females they desired. This also showed that their hormone levels and dominance were higher. Expectations about them grew even more, as is to be expected. The lives of lions are abundant in combat, and everyone expected the same from the jock lions. However, the brothers wanted to take the reins of their own story and surprised everyone with what was to come. The term, divide and conquer, was never accepted by them because the five lions spent most of their time together in an indivisible unit that would lead them to triumph in the near but challenging future. After much walking, they mapped out an extensive area they wished to dominate. Thus, the jock lions began their action plan. Their target was four established prides in the area, all with older and more powerful kings. As inexperienced young lions in combat, they knew that their number of five members would give them an advantage despite their lack of experience. But they went beyond that. Despite their numbers, they needed to use the brains of the four prides mapped out by the jock. Two of them were ruled by only a pair of lions. What would be an easy battle, the third pride was led by three experienced lions, and the fourth pride by four lions who were undefeated in fights. The jock lions would have to win convincingly in the first two battles, and also defeat some nomadic lions and engage in individual confrontations to acquire battle wisdom. Only then could they advance towards the third and fourth prides. If they managed to defeat the three kings of the third pride, they would be ready for their greatest rivals, the four lion cubs, those who possessed the most skilled lionesses in the entire region. Patiently, the five young jock lions observed the way of life of the prides that had only two kings, the Quagapan pride and the Nwat Anri pride. The first confrontation was with the dominant lions of the Quagapan pride. This fight revealed much. Despite being five and possessing differentiated muscularity, they needed more combat experience to continue expanding their territory. Now, with their first females under their governance, they would have to execute the ascension plan more slowly than they would like. After all, the females needed protection, and they didn't want to lose what they had conquered. Acquiring battle experience was paramount to continue winning. A new strategy was added. The five brothers began to surround nomadic lions to train with them. However, they didn't attack them together. On the contrary, 
the group prevented the nomadic lion from fleeing and merely watched as a single jock lion took him down. This way, they trained their strikes individually, thus developing their skills. Shortly after, they attacked the two kings of the Nwat Onri pride, and thanks to their training, it was a very quick and easy fight. The jock lions were now kings of two prides and were prepared to face any adversary that arose. Strong and strategic, these lions boasted not only an enviable physique but also phenomenal reasoning ability for these felines. They swiftly attacked the third pride in their area, the one with three kings. This fight made the jock lions even more confident as everything went according to plan. Now, they had three prides under their dominion. Despite their dominance, the jock lions shared the crown equally among them, and if their unity remained, their strength would be like an unshakable tower. However, their rivals watched everything from afar. The four lion cubs had been on the throne for years, defeating anyone who dared to challenge them. However, with the relatively rapid rise of the jock lions, they felt the circle closing in, and for the first time, they sensed a real threat looming. More than ever, the cubs were on high alert and began to observe the jock lions, searching for a weakness. After all, they wouldn't expect their rivals to attack them, the cubs planned to strike first. During this time, the jock lions gathered the lionesses from the prides because they disliked splitting into patrols for monitoring. Their greatest strength lay in their unity. With all the lionesses together, the lions wouldn't need to take turns protecting the conquered prides, maintaining the powerful formation of five lions. The first offspring of the jock lions were born, and with this, the lions couldn't attack the cubs. They needed to protect their cubs for a few more months. They weren't willing to risk everything, at least not yet. During this time, one of the jock lions, the youngest among them, became obsessed with the lionesses of the cubs. He would often leave his brothers to observe the lionesses of the rival pride while they hunted. When his absence was noticed, his brothers would bring him back and seem to warn him that the time to possess those lionesses had not yet come. This was a dangerously reckless move for lions who had many cubs to protect. However, the recklessness of youth led the youngest jock lion to continue sneaking away to observe the lionesses. The rival cubs soon noticed this weak link and knew that he would be the gateway to the downfall of the jock lions. To make matters even tenser, the lionesses of the cubs entered into estrus, and the intoxicating scent of mating, combined with the obsession to observe them, was enough to make the youngest of the jock lions disregard the danger he faced by approaching the cubs' queens. While one of the queens drank water from the river, the young jock lion approached, capturing all the attention of his desired object. The lion betrayed his brothers as he did not wait for the right moment to be within the boundaries of his rival's territory and faced the consequences of his reckless act. The cubs watched from afar, and their queen was merely bait for them to approach and execute the young jock lion, leaving his body lying near the riverbank. Unsatisfied, the cubs urinated all over the area to ensure that when the jock lions found their fallen brother, they would know who was responsible for the act. A few hours later, the bloody note was read by the jock lions, and now only one thing mattered to them. Revenge. For this, the lands of Kruger witnessed a war between lion coalitions that would last for weeks. Innocent lives would be at risk, conquered prides could lose their kings, and the brute force of the feline world would be pushed to the limit. But the unfolding of this story will be told in the next video. So, subscribe now to not miss it, and please leave a like and comment on what you thought of the video. If you enjoyed it, share this video on your social media and help our work grow. Thank you for watching.